Hello and welcome to another episode of Gear Toward Gear. My name is Sean and I am so glad you're here. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to join me. Today we're talking about a knife, obviously, and it's this knife right here. The Sage 5 Lightweight from Spyderco, an amazing EDC option. And in my opinion, and I'm going to kind of make a case for this, the single best EDC knife that Spyderco makes, period. It's not my favorite Spyderco. Although at the end of the by the end of the video, it very well could be. But I'm going to make the case as to why I think this is the single best option for a general purpose EDC knife in Spyderco's catalog. And probably top five or ten in its class in terms of size and price of any any brand. So yeah, the Sage 5 Lightweight. I absolutely love this knife. So let's kind of do a short version like we typically would in a standard review. And I'm gonna give you some specs just to give you an idea of what we're working with here. So the Sage 5 Lightweight uh, has a price tag of about 120 bucks. Your overall length is a little over seven inches. Blade length is three inches with a cutting edge of closer to like two and three quarters. Your handle length is about four inches. It weighs 2.85 ounces. So it is pretty lightweight as the name would imply, Sage 5 Lightweight. Materials are going to be FRN on the handle, S30V on the blade. It's made in their Taichung Taiwan factory, which I think produces some pretty good stuff. It uses a compression lock for its locking mechanism, deploys ambidextrously via a spider hole. It's got a pocket clip that can be configured for right hand or left hand tip up carry. Having said all that, the compression lock is not super friendly for left handed users. So that is kind of what it is, and that's your basic overview of the Sage 5 Lightweight. So let's do a couple size comparisons real quick, and we'll start with a Benchmade bug out. Uh, kind of a standard that I think most people are familiar with at this point. Uh, pretty similar, overall length is going to be a little longer on the bug out, although it's going to be narrower, not quite as broad as the Sage 5. You're going to get more cutting edge, of course, also with the bug out. Price is going to be about 20 bucks more for a bug out. The prices have gone up a little bit on them in the last several months, so uh, this is a cheaper option by about 20 bucks for basically the same materials, a plastic type handle, and S30V blade steel. Let's look at a Native 5 real quick. My single favorite Spyderco model, period. Very, very similar aesthetic and silhouette and size to the Sage 5. Not quite as broad, not quite quite as long, but super, super close. Um, I, I just love the Native 5. I need to do a video on this knife at some point. Uh, and let's do one more, the PM2. The Paramilitary 2 is gonna be significantly larger in overall length than the Sage 5, although the dimensions this way, again, the Sage 5 being a bit broader, are gonna be pretty darn close. So there's your size comparisons. So why? what I say that this is the single best EDC knife that Spyderco makes. Uh, there's a number of reasons and I'm gonna share those with you. Granted, this is mostly gonna be based on preference, but I think there's also some objectivity to this, but certainly some subjectivity. So I'll start by saying that my three favorite Spyderco models are these three over here on the left, the Native 5, the Dragonfly 2, and the Chaparral, which is both of these. And they're all backlocks, uh, coincidentally, and the Sage 5 is not. Um, but they're my favorites mainly because I, I mean, I, I love them just in their design and their functionality, but there's also a lot of variants available, and I've sort of collected them. And so, although I enjoy using all of them, they also feed the collector in me, whereas the Sage 5 doesn't, because there's really only two variations to choose from and I'll tell you about the other one and so for that reason this really just feeds my need for just a practical everyday carry tool and when I say everyday carry I don't mean really really hard use like in a professional setting I mean a, a knife that you could put in your pocket seven days a week gym shorts sweatpants jeans a suit and it's going to do everything that you would need it to do around the house, around the office, cutting string, opening packages, the basic crap that we all do with our knives. You know, it's not going to win any cut test awards if you put it up against some super steel, but 
it's it is a very functional and practical everyday carry option so that's kind of the context in which i am speaking about the sage 5 lightweight so again maybe by the end of this video it will be my favorite so what do i love about it i love several things so let's start with the handle material i love frn a lot of people do not like frn or really any plastics i love g10 i love carbon fiber titanium micarta i like them all but i think i like frn more than most people do having said that in my opinion there is no better frn period not just spiderco but no better frn period than the frn that spiderco uses specifically on knives that are made in their taichung taiwan factory this frn for me is the best looking and has the best and most practical level of traction of any frn period i still do really like the frn that they use in golden colorado which is very similar to what they use in Seki City, Japan, like on the Delica. But you can see they are clearly different designs, different textures, different, it's just, it's very different. Um, and I think it's perfect. It's not quite as aggressive as the Golden Colorado FRN, but it's still plenty grippy. And I think it looks fantastic. It's also thinner. Uh, the stock of the FRN is, is quite a bit thinner than it would be on your golden colorado frn so love the handle material think it's the bee's knees blade steel s30v kind of the standard for spiderco for their entry level models at this point the stuff made in japan typically still is going to be vg10 as like their base and the chinese made stuff is going to be 8 sierra 13 but most of your usa produced is going to be s30v like you see on the native 5 but in taichung in their Taichung factory, they actually import American steels, which is cool. So we've got CPM S30V on a knife made in Taiwan. So good steel. Again, it's not going to win any cut test competitions against 10V, but for an everyday carry utility tool, it's going to do everything I ever could possibly need it to do and more. So digging the handle material, digging the blade steel, the locking mechanism i'm a huge fan of again coincidentally all three of my favorite models have back locks but i am a huge fan of the compression lock it is fun to play with um you know if you're one that likes to fidget with your knives and just sit there and flick them and you know play around with them the compression lock is is pretty darn good for that but it's also just a functional strong locking mechanism that allows you to keep your fingers out of the path of the blade at all times uh, in, in, a, in a way similar to what the axis lock provides, right? You can have your fingers out of the way and close the knife. So I do love the compression lock. I think it's one of the better locking mechanisms out there. Big fan. So, so far, so good. Handle material, blade steel, and locking mechanism. Pocket clip, total win for me. And this is where I may lose some people because, again, this is totally subjective to your preference, but... I personally love the wire clip from Spyderco. I think it's one of the best factory pocket clips, period, from any manufacturer. The kind of standard factory clip you often see looks something like this. Here's an aftermarket clip on a Native 5. But the wire clip for me, I just, I really enjoy them. I think they carry well. I think they look good. I've never had any issues with them. It also happens to be what comes on two of my, my favorites, the Chaparral and the Dragonfly 2. So the pocket clip is totally just a win for me. So it's checking a lot of boxes, as you can see. And the last thing that I think it really has going for it is the ergonomics. And I think it's more comfortable, ergonomically speaking, than any other knife on the table. And arguably for me, any other Spyderco knife. And there's a few reasons specifically that I think lend itself to being very comfortable. Uh, one is that although it is thin in this dimension, it still has some, you know, it's still broad. So it still is very much a hand filling handle. Um, so I don't feel like I'm holding a really tiny knife, although it's not a, not a super large knife. So I do like the proportions of it being broad, but also thin and it just carries super well in the pocket. Um, 
So that's one thing ergonomically. Another is that the thumb ramp is something that's a little unique on the Sage 5 lightweight. Uh, so if we look at something like the Paramilitary 2, the thumb ramp is very severe, right? It ramps up really quick. It really gets up there and gets kind of tall, which on a knife this size isn't really a problem because I have plenty of room to stretch my thumb. So my thumb's not cramped and like wanting to kick back like this. It's, it's pretty comfortable on a PM2. Uh, and I do love a PM2. Uh, Delica, kind of same story, a little more cramped if you hold it in in this grip but there's plenty of other ways that you could hold it this is my first uh first spider code that i ever bought in 2013 i think um and then the native five has basically no ramp or like a negative ramp right because it, it just ramps down so this is crazy stupid comfortable for me and it's got some good functional jipping so this is kind of the happy medium on the sage five lightweight in that you do have a ramp but it's, it's gentle. It's not as severe as like a PM2, a Para 3, a Delica. It's just kind of the perfect uh, geometry and it just makes for a very comfortable knife. The forward finger choil is usable on this knife. Although it's not a huge forward choil, it's usable even for my big hands because it kind of guards itself with this little nub. And it may not be the most aesthetically pleasing thing we've ever seen, but I can use this forward finger choil without any issues, and I appreciate that. So really in any grip for me, the Sage 5 is just, it's just comfortable. There's no hot spots for me at all, and it, it just feels, feels right in the hand. So ergonomics are totally, totally killer. The price, I think, again, at around 120 bucks, I think is fair. I think it's competitive, and I don't know that you could find a better EDC knife in Spyderco's catalog for that price than this guy right here. Um, I just really do, really do enjoy it. So why wouldn't it be my favorite? I'm telling you it's the best. I'm telling you it is the best Spyderco knife, in my opinion, that they make. And I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Really the only reason why I might still be on the fence of it being my favorite is that there's only two options. It's the lightweight, and the standard version, which I may have already mentioned, the standard version just has the carbon fiber kind of laminate uh, handle scales, and it's heavier. The The standard is 3.2 ounces, the lightweight is 2.8, um, but you still got, again, those those steel liners, so you got that strength, which is fantastic. Um, if, and if I didn't mention that, this knife maintains the steel liners of the standard Sage 5, so although it's a lightweight, Unlike the Native 5 lightweight that is just FRN and no liners, this still maintains liners, gives it incredible amount of strength, and it just feels super strong, but still super lightweight. Um, so I, I appreciate that. And the standard Sage 5 is 165 bucks. So you can save $45, get something that's lighter, and in my opinion, looks better and feels better so it's just it kind of checks all the boxes its biggest competitor is the para 3 lightweight so the pm2 right has a baby brother called the para 3 the smaller version of this knife they made a para 3 lightweight a couple of years ago and it's been super popular i personally don't like the para 3 design it just doesn't work for me and so in my opinion this beats the Para 3 Lightweight in every single category. Aesthetics, ergonomics, materials. There's literally no category where I think the Para 3 beats the Sage 5 Lightweight. I think the Sage 5 Lightweight crushes the Para 3 in literally every category. I would, I would actually never, I would never recommend the Para 3 Lightweight to anybody. If you're looking for a knife in that price range, in that size range, with those materials, this is a knife that you need to buy, it, according to me. Um, at least that's what I would tell you. So I've owned three of the Para 3 lightweights, have sold all of them. This is where it's at. So if they made more variants of this in different colors, maybe different handle materials, uh, different blade steels, coated blades, 
you know, you name it, I would probably start buying them and, and sort of start collecting the Sage 5 series. Um, but right now it's just, there's just two of them. So for that reason, it hasn't started to feed the collector in me, which is fine. I'm perfectly happy with j just having it as a user, but that's the only, the only hesitation I have to calling it uh, my favorite, but I really do, really, really do like it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the Sage 5 Lightweight. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you own a Sage 5 Lightweight, do you love it? Is it everything you thought it would be and more? Did it leave you wanting for more? And if you don't own a Sage 5 Lightweight, what do you think? I mean, as far as the aesthetic, the, the functionality, the price, the size, do you think it's something that would appeal to you more than a Native 5 or more than a Pair 3 Lightweight? I'd be interested to hear your feedback. Uh, and this knife, haven't talked about, the only reason it's on the table is because I think this knife is so much better. This is the Senta Fonte 3. I think this is so much better than the Delica and the Endura, and it's kind of like halfway between the two in size. Um, if you were ever going to buy a Delica or an Endura, I would tell you, don't and buy this. This is an amazing knife. I love the Senta Fonte 3. But that's... For another video i guess but i didn't want to leave it out since i put it on the table so that's it the sage 5 lightweight in my opinion the single best spyderco knife that is made and one of the top five or ten edc knives period in the 120 dollar price range love to hear your feedback thank you guys all so much for watching i really do appreciate it and i'll talk to you soon